Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Automation Creations. In this series of videos, I'm going to be going over how to use Terraform to manage resources in Microsoft Azure. I've been working with Terraform on Azure a lot lately, so I've been showing these concepts to a lot of people, and I decided to put it all together in a series of videos that will hopefully give you a good introduction to Terraform with Azure that's easy to understand. I'll also be making all slides and lab files available on my GitHub when they're finished. Here are a few prerequisites for this lab. First, you will need to have access to an Azure subscription. You'll also want to have a basic familiarity with Microsoft Azure. In particular, if you know how to create and or manage resource groups and storage accounts in the Azure portal, you should be fine with this lab. You'll also want to have some basic programming or scripting knowledge. And lastly, while it's not completely necessary, a basic knowledge of Terraform would be a plus since I won't be going too deep into Terraform specifics here outside of the topics that we'll be covering. I'll save that for future videos. Now in the first part of this lab, we'll be concentrating on building our development environment by installing and configuring some tools on our local machine. We'll be using Chocolatey to install the Azure CLI or Azure Command Line Interface HashiCorp Terraform and Visual Studio Code, as well as the Terraform extension for Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's get started. In order to streamline the installation of our applications, like I mentioned, we're going to be using Chocolatey for all our installs. Now, Chocolatey is a software management automation tool for Windows that wraps installers, executables, and scripts into compiled packages. You can then manage your installed packages similarly to a package manager you would see on Linux. If you haven't started using Chocolatey to manage your installed applications, I highly recommend it. Anyway, so the first thing we need to do is get Chocolatey installed. To do this, they do have a one-liner available on their website. If you just browse to their webpage at chocolatey.org, if you click on install, make sure that you have individual selected. And if you scroll further down the page, they have the command right here. You just have to hit copy and paste that into your terminal. Now, in order to install Chocolatey as well as packages with Chocolatey, you need to make sure that you're running from a terminal that has administrative privileges. So let's go ahead and fire up PowerShell, Windows PowerShell ISE as administrator. Now I've already written a small script that has all the commands that we're going to need. So I'm going to open that right now. And like I said, you just have to make sure that you're running your terminal as administrator. And I can verify that up here at the top of the screen in my title bar that it says administrator before Windows PowerShell ISE. As you can see here, I have a series of commands that will be used to install all the applications that we need. Line 9 contains the one-liner I mentioned earlier to install Chocolatey. So let's go ahead and run that first. Now I skipped ahead a little bit so that you didn't have to wait for me to install this, but if you scroll up a little bit in your output, um, it does mention it's likely that you'll need to close and reopen your shell before using your Choco commands. I've had pretty good luck recently just running the commands after this without reopening my terminal, but for the purposes of this lab, let's just go ahead and reopen the ISE as administrator. Okay, let's get back into the script. Now let's get the rest of our tools installed. You can see here that the Choco command is used with the install argument followed by the name of the package you want to install. And for all these commands, I'm specifying Y to automatically confirm the installation. And I added the force flag just for good measure. Let's go ahead and install Terraform. I skipped ahead again so you didn't have to wait, but now that Terraform is installed, we'll be able to run Terraform commands such as plan and apply. Next on the list, we need to install the Azure CLI. Azure CLI, or the Azure Command Line Interface, installs a set of commands that can be used to create and manage Azure resources. The Azure RM Terraform provider actually uses Azure CLI under the hood to communicate with Azure. This one can take a little bit longer to complete, so I'll just pause the recording for another minute. 
After the Azure CLI is finished installing, let's move on to Visual Studio Code or VS Code. VS Code is a free cross-platform code editor that has all the features we need to write and deploy Terraform configurations. Okay, great. We should have everything installed that we need so far. Optionally, I added a line to install PowerShell 7. I won't be using it here, but I use it on all my machines over Windows PowerShell. I definitely suggest it if you haven't already started installing it. Okay, so let's close the script down and let's fire up VS Code. Once this is open, um, I'm going to close this Getting Started tab first. First thing we're going to do is install the Terraform extension. This is going to help us with auto-completing, syntax highlighting, things like that. Um, it'll just overall improve your experience. So to do that, let's go over to the extensions tab on the left-hand side of the screen. In the search bar, I'm going to search for Terraform. And you'll notice two results come up in the, in the search results. Uh, the first one I've actually never used. Um, it always shows up first, but it's not actually developed by HashiCorp, so I haven't used it yet. Um, I'd be interested to see if anybody has used this and has any input on it to see if it's better than the one that is um, developed by HashiCorp. But let's go ahead and install the extension for HashiCorp Terraform. Okay, great. So now you should have everything installed. So we can go ahead and close VS Code now. Now our environment is ready to start writing Terraform configurations with ease. However, we're not going to jump right into configurations just yet. In the next video, we're going to explore the Terraform provider documentation we will be utilizing when writing our configuration. In my opinion, understanding how to navigate the Terraform provider docs for Azure RM will be one of the most important things you will learn in this series, so make sure you check it out. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.